Hello, my name is Paul Tranny, and I'm going to take you through Photoshop magic for mere mortals. In fact, I'm in Photoshop already. So uh, I do have this beach PSD file open. All right. And the first thing you want to do when you launch Photoshop and any PSD uh, is to start to uh, check the workspace. So that's what I'm going to do. You can see that it's set to essentials, but I can change to a number of these graphic and web. You can see how it changes you get the idea, motion, because you can actually do motion. But I'm gonna set it back to essentials. And then make sure you you also reset essentials if you happen to change it, okay? So reset essentials. All right, so you can see how this looks. This library panel I don't need. I can just grab this gray bar right here. You can see right here, grab that gray bar. I can pull it out, say, hey, you know what? Go away, just by closing it, because I don't need that right now, okay? The uh, three panels you need to worry about the most is the layers panel over here, the properties panel right here for specific properties for things that you have selected, and then your toolbar panel off to the side right over here. So those are the three most important panels. Notice there's the option bar at the top, okay? But let's dive right into this, because what do I want to do? Well, quite frankly, I need to crop and straighten this photo. Pretty common thing. In fact, what am I going to do? Right over here, you can see, if I can even zoom in on that a little more, right in here, you can see I actually want to select, sure enough, that crop tool right there. Okay, so selecting it, right? right here and I get these handles and I can start to adjust this any way I want. But what I wanna do is I wanna do a couple things. I wanna take a look at the top right up here. I wanna say, hey, you know what? These are my options like I mentioned a second ago. I wanna make this content aware and I'll show you what that means. And I wanna make sure this is unchecked. So don't delete the cropped pixels, okay? But check this out right over here. This is really cool. Straighten, I love this, okay? So I didn't even cover the traditional you know, crop. You know how that works if I crop it right there, but straighten is interesting. So if I select straighten, I can come in here and draw a line, okay? Draw a line uh, just kind of across that horizon line, which is slanted, and then let go, and it straightens it, okay? And what's happening now is there's this gap and what's gonna happen here is it's gonna go ahead and do a content aware fill for those gaps. So I don't have to worry about doing that. All I have to do is hit this checkbox or hit enter and it will fill in those spaces and make this nice and straight. And this is looking good so far. Easy enough, all right. Uh, I can also navigate around uh, this particular photo by using the hand tool, using the zoom tool, but you could also use shortcut keys. So if you roll over any of these, you'll see shortcuts, hand tool is H or space bar actually. And then also for zoom is gonna be Z apparently. So again, I can double click on that and I've already zoomed in on it. Uh, but Z will actually just switch to it. But the easiest thing to do is do a command plus and minus. So hold down that command key or control key. If you're on a PC, you can hit command zero. So that will make it full size. So it fills that frame. And then I can pan around like this. Okay, so those, that's kind of moving around this. Let's take a look at doing some overall sort of adjustments to this. First of all, it's pretty washed out and it could use a little color pop, right? So that's what we're gonna do right over here. Work non-destructively, I'll tell you what that means in a second, but layers panel right down here at the bottom. Might be kind of tricky to see. Create a new fill or adjustment layer, that's what that says. So click right there and this is access to all of these various settings. So actually these are adjustment layers. And what I wanna do is I wanna increase the vibrance of this photo. So selecting vibrance, I've selected, oh, what changed? You might not have noticed it, but right up here, the properties panel, like I mentioned a second ago, we wanna make sure this properties panel uh, is open and I can easily start to increase the vibrance like I'm doing right there. And I can also increase the saturation. What's the difference between these two? Well. Vibrance is going to protect a lot of the skin tones, okay? So if I take this down, okay, I just take that down and bring up the saturation, and this is pretty extreme. You can see Jonah, my nephew, 
uh, makes him look like he's been swimming in radiation, quite frankly, you know? So I want to make sure saturation is down. Vibrance will protect skin tones typically and do more subtle adjustments. So you can see the blue of this water really comes through. So that's what I want to do. And I can tweak up this saturation a little bit, but already this looks much better. What did it look like before? Well, right over here in my layers panel, I can turn off the visibility of this layer by clicking on the eyeball. Click before, after before, after, okay? So layers panel, hugely important. And this is what I mean by non-destructive. So I can turn this on and off. This is a separate layer, so it's not destroying these pixels uh, for this layer. All right, let's add another one, another adjustment layer, because we need to increase the brightness and contrast, okay? Selecting brightness and contrast does the same thing. We can see that layer right there. We can see how the properties panel changes. I can increase the brightness, increase the contrast, really kind of like make this pop. This looks, um, this looks a world better, but kind of what we're losing is the sky, Okay, so let's turn that off. I'm, I'm losing the, the, the sky up here. I'm not crazy about that, okay? So how can you just bring back sort of uh, parts of this or, or, or make sure the brightness and contrast only affects certain parts of an image? Well, what that means is I have to use this layer mask. So this is a layer mask right here. These are hugely important. Layer mask is applied to this brightness and contrast layer. So I can click on that, okay? So make sure it has these little outlines around it. And, and now I can paint with black. So if I paint with black and I'll go over here to my brush, selecting my brush tool, checking my settings for my brush, right? Here it is, like the size, right? Zoop, zoop, zoop. And the hardness, right? I wanna keep this actually hardness down to zero, but I could change the size right in here. So if I take it up to about 83, uh, 83 pixels, I can see the size. Here's another pro tip is use the open and closing brackets. If I just start hitting the closing bracket, okay, underneath the delete key, it will increase the size and then decrease the size when I move it down or when I do the open uh, bracket. So closing bracket will make it larger, opening bracket will make it smaller, or I can just scrub this way, but you can see it's about 700. So now I can start to kind of paint up here and that's going to bring back some of that sky so it's not so washed out. Okay, so maybe that's what I want to do in this case, just to kind of give it some focus. And you can see what it did over here for my mask is it paints in black right up there. Okay, so that's what I want. Just bring a pop of color in there. Let's just add a little right there. So bringing back that color, that looks pretty good. And so far, so good. All right, so let's do something else now. Because I'm mean, like, I love the kids in the background. Um, I don't know them. So what if we wanted to get rid of them, right? Not to be mean, with all due respect to their parents, right? I'm going to come over here and start using some of these tools for doing some local adjustments or um, so-called lo local editings and touch-ups. So I'm going to use the healing brush tool, right? There's the spot healing brush. Actually, let's use the spot healing brush because it is the most magical, right? So it's the spot healing brush, the very top one. Looks like a Band-Aid. Boom. Okay, same thing, it uses a brush and I can still use that closing bracket to increase or decrease the size. Okay, so I can come over here, make it about the size of this little guy right here, click and drag over that part. And see what I did there is I was on the brightness and contrast layer and I'm glad that happened because it's doing it to that layer mask. And actually I wanna click on this layer zero. So clicking there, now I can affect that layer, rolling over those guys, zoop, and now they've disappeared. Don't worry, they really, they're still alive somewhere. Don't worry, they're fine. No kids were harmed in the making of this photo, but you can see how I can easily kind of go in here. This works best for organic images, and sometimes you might have to go over it a couple times. You know, it might not be perfect every time, but it works great for these organic images and uh, just basically samples the pixels around it and fills it in as you'd expect, kind of like that, okay? Pretty cool, huh? Pretty straightforward overall. So I'd say that looks pretty darn good in this situation. Um, so that looks pretty good. Uh, let me do actually one more thing, uh, just kind of show you before I move on from adjustment layers and layer masks, is to show you that there are other things you can do. 
So I encourage you to check out something like Color Lookup, which is, uh, you know, something pretty new, but kind of click through all of these if you want to. You can make black and white, photo filter, warming filter, cooling filter. Color Lookup. This is kind of interesting. Color Lookup. I can sort of simulate different cameras. So go into my properties panel. I consider these like presets, kind of like Instagram presets, if you will. So I could do a two strip look. Ooh, to see how that looks. Nice. Three strip. Mm, a little much. Let's go down to crisp winter. Ooh, that is so nice. Look at that. Boom. Right, and the great thing is, is if I feel like this is too much blue, I can come in here and adjust the opacity, okay? And I can click down here and kind of scrub through or enter the numbers or scrub on the actual number, but I can take that down some. Boom, gorgeous, done and done. So I can save this and call it a day. Um, but let's kind of take this to the next level because I'd actually like to add a little bit more to the background because, uh, yeah, poor Jonah's looking a little lonely, you know. But let's make it a little more interesting other than just having people that I don't know. <laughs> let's go ahead and add something more interesting. So I am I'm just going to kind of jump in and open up, say, for instance, a, you know, a couple files. And uh, let's take a look at these. So right over here. I have a couple files right over here. Uh, I can go with a simple boat or something or I can get a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna open up these two files right here. So this, these two files, shark, octopus tentacle. I know, crazy, right? But what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to select. So selecting gets to be really important. If you're gonna select a background to remove it or um, you know, select any portion to add or remove or edit or add the brightness to. Selections are very important. This is, of course, going to be super easy. But again, this is just for mere mortals. So we're going to keep this simple. Uh, we're going to go up to select. And oh, by the way, actually, this is the easiest way to do is go right over here to the magic wand tool. Let's do that. Boom. Selecting the magic wand tool. You can adjust the tolerance. Tolerance is going to default to 32. That's cool with me. I just click once. Marching ants, as they're known, you know, are marching around and have selected that background. So all I need to do is select that background and hit delete. Okay, there we go. Have that done. I could do a, um, a select all. I don't even know if it's in here, but do a command A to select all and then copy. And now I can go over to the beach and then paste paste it right in there, okay? And start to move that into position. <laughs> All right, so far so good. Let's do Command V again, because we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two of these. We need one uh, to be the actual tentacle and we need one to sort of simulate uh, the reflection in the water. So that's why I pasted in the second one. So how do we do this? Well, I need to do something to the image. So let's go to image. Actually, let's go to, let's get, this would be even easier. Edit. Let's go down to edit. This is where it is transform. And I just want to apologize for it being so far away. Flip vertical. Edit, transform, flip vertical. Selecting that, I flipped it vertically and I can do that. Okay. Your first tendency is to then start to play with opacity, and that may or may not work, right? Um, it's kind of not working. It's just washing it out, okay? And what I want to make it is like his shadow, which is going to have, it's almost like it has a layer mode applied to it. So I'm going to select this, and I'm going to introduce you to layer modes, because right in here, if you select normal, these are your layer modes. So this is where it gets interesting. I can go from normal, and I can go to darken, for instance. See, it knocks out all that white. So this is much more appropriate for what I want. Remove the darks, you know, or excuse me, remove the lights, keep the darks. I can go to multiply. That's potentially even better. I really like multiply, but you can just kind of play with all of these just to see what you get. We can go into lighten. That's going to keep the light parts. I think multiply is what I want to do. And again, I can still take down that opacity, something like that. See how it matches his shadow much better or his reflection? Okay. All right. We need to make sure it ripples just like uh, his shadow, like it would with water. How do we do that? We go to filter. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to distort it. How do we want to distort it? Well, you guessed it. We're lucky enough to have a filter called wave. And that's what we want to do is we want to add a wave filter to it. Um, keep in mind, this is actually kind of hard to see. And I 
do want to apologize for that. But I'm going to keep this at a at 9 and then 60 and then 1 and 37. And, you know, basically the vertical is going to be less than the horizontal. Okay, so so it's not gonna it's not gonna distort vertically as much as it is horizontally. So this is the biggest change you want to make is just drop that down. Okay, we have number of generators. You can get really kind of crazy with those, but we'll just keep that down to, you know, one or two is fine, up to nine. Okay, just like that. Let's actually let's go to sixteen because that looks that looks pretty good. Maybe thirteen, but let's click OK and see what happens. And there we have that obviously like doing its thing and you can see how that looks so not bad i can undo that so edit undo wave i can go back into filter distort and go into wave again i can change this again this is this is your life typically let's go ahead and check check change this to 20 and amplitude seems pretty good but I'm just playing with this just to see how it's going to look all in all. Let's go with something like that. Click OK. Boom. All right, let's uh, let's just go with that. I think that looks fine. I can drop it into place and I might want to remove parts of this. So look at how it goes all the way down. Maybe I don't want it to go all the way down. Now I could use the eraser tool, right? Have the eraser tool, but that's destructive. So as soon as I select the eraser tool and erase that part, that's gone forever. When really what I want to do something is like what I did here for this layer mask is add a layer mask to this layer. Okay, so for layer two, come down here add a layer mask to it. Now I can do the same thing is paint with black down here to kind of remove it like that. So we get just that reflection right up there and I can remove this funkiness right there too. Cool. So that's how you composite two photos together. You could take it a step further. I could do this really fast. Um, just selecting that, pasting it in, sizing it down like that. Right, same process, adding a layer mask, painting with black to remove, making sure, yeah, that looks pretty good. Actually, let's bring, let's make sure those are beneath the color lookup, oops, as well. But, uh, you know, I'm just quickly just kind of removing the um, most of that water just by painting, okay? What we learned a second ago is we could even use something like the uh, magic wand to select and do more of a remove, but that's not bad. I can drop that back there and yeah, just call that a day. And that's how you do some basic Photoshop editing. It's Photoshop magic for mere mortals. I'm gonna do one more thing just for fun though, by the way, since I said this is Photoshop magic, I'm gonna select this tentacle, right? What if I wanna change the tentacle? Maybe it's coming out at the board. Well, we can go to edit, go down to puppet warp. That gives me this mesh and I can start to add these control points right in here like that. Now, once I've added those control points, I can move it around. So it's like it's going to come up and wrap around the little boy. Not to worry. He's actually Poseidon's son. So he, uh, all the sea creatures love him. So he's just going to give him a hug. And that's all that's happening there, okay? In fact, if you want to get really funky, I can turn off the show mesh. It's easier to see. And I can change this to distort. That's right up here. Check this out. Boop. And it's going to really start to distort. So, like, the more I pull this out, the larger it becomes, right? Because maybe I want to pull this out like it's coming toward him. I can do that like that. And now it's starting to I'm gonna wrap around the little boy. And it's getting freaky now. Right. Just like that, Photoshop magic for mirror models. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I could do all of these techniques with a number of photos. So uh, whether it's this a Stockholm image, you guessed it, it's a matter of doing the same thing, coming in here, 
you know, adding brightness and contrast, using a levels, because I could hit auto for levels, and that will pop that out, and trying some other things as well, so I can even jump in and uh, say, for instance, add a photo filter instead of warming, I can change that to cooling filter, make it nice and blue, and then it's just that matter of sort of adjusting these levels too if I wanted it to pop some more. But you get the idea. All done the same way, I can remove cars, you get the idea. Uh, adding layers and then editing layers is how it's done in Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching.